And right. I have this follow up question, which is really, really, you know, it, it kind of like <clears throat> pops up in my head. And I think you're the you're the ideal person to kind of respond to that. Why is this so novel? You know, why is this I, like like to me? To me, it's like duh, okay. But uh, I mean, like here we're talking as if like, well, that's how it needs to be. And I could just see like some audience members looking at this and they're like, well, my boss ain't like that, or you know, like they can't even imagine a boss being that way or an employer or whatever. Tom, why is it so novel? Especially because we've all experienced bad leadership. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I, I, I do. I think it comes down to I don't oversimplify it, but I do think it comes down to that three little word ego. Mm. And and that's where, you know, what I call enlightened leaders, it's someone who has gotten over themselves. Yeah. And it's not that they don't have an ego because, you know, Tom does. <laughs> Tom, Tom has, you know high expectations. I don't always meet my standards, you know, in my, in my pursuit, but, and my ego gets a little bruised because of that. But I think it comes to a, a level of sort of growing up, maturing in, in, in that process mm. and recognizing your, your talents, recognizing your skills and your competence, but also owning them and embracing them in, in light of the whole person that you are, that you embody. And, and, and I'm not perfect. I don't know all the answers. Right. It's one of the things I love about coaching is I don't have to have all the right. answers. Mm-hmm. I just have to know how to listen and ask the, the right questions. And that's, yeah. I think, the, how I came about running and leading the department the way that I did is, is that I, I knew that if I wanted to be my best and, and the things that I've been charged with for the department to increase enrollment, to increase retention and to increase retention of the faculty, sure. that then I, I needed to sow that process in, into them. Mm. And that in the end makes me look better, sure. which, which does, which does or can feed the ego, but it's recognizing yeah. that my authentic self, my higher self, my, my better self is not going to be self-actualized on its own. Mm. Me, me simply directing them to, teach these courses this way or, or that without any of their own individual freedom. It, it, it's, it's going to restrict and limit them. It's going to restrict and limit the departmental growth. And it's going to make me look bad ultimately. And, and so right. it, it is somewhat selfish, but I think it's a health, healthy, selfish perspective. When, when I was coaching yeah. speech and debate, my number one rule with my team is don't embarrass me. <laughs> and and that's probably the inverse way of saying, you know, make me look good. But it was also for their benefit, because one of the things I told them is that your, your speech begins when you get off the van. That That's when people are going to first right. make that first impression of you. And so if you act an idiot out here, it's going to be hard for them to get over that idiot in, in that competition room where you're yeah. competing and, and performing. Yeah. So it's looking at the whole. So I think. Answer simply, it's ego, mm-hmm. and we we be, we become very very short sighted. I think we look for the, the quick fix, yeah, the shortest the shortest route, the shortcuts, and and telling people to do what we want them to do, telling them what they need to do. Just just do your job and shut up, sit down. It it, it seems easier. But there's a whole lot of payment that you're going to be responsible for later on relationally. Right. And True. people are either either aggressive in their reactions to that or they'll say, yes, sir. No, sir. Just like I did when I was sent to the principal's office as a kid. But it, it's going in one ear and out the other. And it, it can create uh, passive aggressive behavior. Well, they'll tell you they will do it. But they might just drag their feet. Sure. Right. Yes. Uh, you, you can't win that battle, not long term. And I think it's changing now, at least from the outside in. I do think you see more programs about it, more discussion about it, more books about it from this perspective. Mm-hmm. But it still hasn't trickled down to the boots on the ground a, a, as much. Because right. I, I feel 
I feel like a lot of people that were in my position, I know for a fact, just because of conversations I had with them, they, they felt under the thumb. They felt under, you know, the gun against their head to, 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 to get it done, to perform. And so they are reacting to that and just simply acting out on others as opposed to being confident in who they are and say, okay, so what's the best way to accomplish this? Mm -hmm. And I just went to the source. Okay, here's mm -hmm. what we've been charged with. How do you think we need to be approaching this? I've got some ideas, but here's what you, an opportunity for you to share that with me. It's getting yeah. over self. That, that was a long way around the road. <laughs> but, 